This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hello, welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. It's your weekly dose of Technolist, and here we are at CES 2014 once again. Once again. Once again. So we saw so many interesting things here this year, but honestly, I think my favorite was the curved underpants. Yes, it's a 4K <laughs> flexible curved wearable. It's That's important. Wearable. Translucent. Wearable underpants. Underpants. I'm wearing my translucent underpants right now. Uh, so what did you see? <laughs> what did I see? Actually, we're going to just run down uh, our favorite stuff that we've seen so far, and I'm going to go ahead and start with Fin6. Fin6 is a little company that has some brilliant engineers from MIT that developed a really ridiculously cool power adapter. I know I'm talking about power oh, adapter. Oh, a power adapter. Yay! Well, okay, you know that giant brick you bring with your laptop? They yes. have one that does the same thing. It provides 65 watts of power, and it's only 45 grams. So and that's so, enough to charge your laptop. Yeah, it is. And it's enough to you know, maintain it and charge it at the same time. In fact, they even have that USB um, port on the on the cable as well, so you can wow. charge your smartphone while you're charging your laptop. Uh, Ooh. I mean, aside from the monster Alienware desktop replacement stuff, this will be enough to charge most everybody's laptop. And at, at 45 grams in American speak, that's 1.58 ounces. I wow. mean, this thing is lightweight. And it's really cool that way that they're able That's to do cool. it just by like doing much, much faster switching. It's like 10 times faster switching than current, you know, 120 hertz power supplies. Yeah. The only thing that I, that I don't know exactly on it right now, I know that it's $85 and it's coming out in Q2, is, um, is I don't know if it's going to work internationally. Oh, so I need to okay. find that out because that's my biggest thing is, you know, traveling internationally, you want a really light power supply. And this mm -hmm. is going to be one where you can use with tips for most any other, you know, Sony, Lenovo, whatever laptop you have. Um, and 85 bucks, if it oh, saves you uh, an extra pound in your luggage, I yeah. think it's worth it. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, I did see something cool as well. Uh, 3D Systems, they've been coming out with all sorts of really cool things this year. And two of those were the Cube and the Cube Pro. So the Cube is a very small 3D printer. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's, a, it's a small 3D printer, but the thing about this one is you don't have to build it from the ground up whenever you purchase it. So you don't have to take it apart and put it back together and recalibrate it every time you move what? it. That's all the fun, though. I know. It's fun as for you, me. As it's you fun learned for with me. the printer bot. So, yeah, as I learned with the printer bots. But this one, it's under 1000 bucks, and it's a consumer product. So they're trying to bring 3D printing out to the consumers and not just the hackers and not just the makers. And I think that's pretty cool because it's, it's giving a lot more people reasons to understand 3D and reasons mm -hmm. to understand how to develop your own models and things like that. Do, do they, you know, have the same kind of ethos as the rest of the 3D printing community? Is it open hardware? They don't. Yeah, that's one of the things. They do have their own website and they have a whole bunch of different models on there. So you can go there and check them all, all out. Are one interesting thing, yeah, well, they're under a thousand bucks. And then okay. their models, they're all free on their website. So you can just download whatever you want and you can print those out. Kind of like the shark that I used sure, off sure. of the Maker so website. Of Thingiverse. Yeah, Thingiverse. Right. Yeah, it's kind of like that, except it's their own, their own genre of that. Mm -hmm. So one interesting is, thing as well with them is they can do printing in sugar and they can do printing in ceramic. See, now, now <laughs> we get to the point where we figure out why Shannon likes it. They print the sugar. sugar. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I was like, I saw those and I was just like, This Dude. is the girl that steals packets of sugar from restaurants. I'm, I'm no, just you outing did that. you. Okay, whatever. whatever. What else did you see? <laughs> um, I saw the Geonaut. And uh, it's a really cool French company. They came out with this. Uh, we actually looked at a prototype of it last year. It's basically a 360 degree action camera. So you clip it onto oh. your helmet or whatever have you. You don't need to worry about pointing it at the action. Uh, they have an app that allows you to view the playback. And you can just use your finger or the accelerometer to tilt the screen to see the uh, th 360 degree image. Um, or wow. you can just export it into Premiere. And you get like a 2048 by 1024 really wide image. Um, and it's all stitched together in camera. That's so then you cool. can like in say Premiere or After but Effects. But it's video, or, right? Yeah, and whatever. Okay. Yeah, so it's like a regular H.264 okay. you know, MP4 yeah. file, and you can take this into your video editor and crop in, and then you know pan and use Dude. the spots that are the best. So what I love is you know Paul and I have been playing a lot with quadcopters lately, and. It's kind of a pain to have to like, you know, rotate your gimbal and everything to be pointed at your yeah. point of interest. But if you had a 360 degree, that's horizontal, and 150 degree vertical um, action camera, you know, mounted on the bottom of your quadcopter, you wouldn't need to worry what direction it's facing. <laughs> you could in post always get it. And I, I love it. Is it small? It's small. Uh, it's dorky looking, as that's all okay. action cameras are. So <laughs> yeah, it's, they it's usually like, are. You know, it's like six GoPros on your head. Um, it's actually kind of small, but um, it's also 500 bucks. 
Ooh, so it's a bit pricey. Kind of pricey. But you can you can actually hack this together right now That's cool. with a bunch of GoPros, but yeah. it cost a lot more because of the rig that it would take and the expense of all the cameras and all the stitching after the fact. So yeah. you know, good on them for figuring out how to bring it to market. One little quirk that I'm not a fan of is it's locked at 25 frames per second. Oh. So if you're a European, you're probably used to that. It's called PAL. Everybody else, we're used to 30. What what the heck? Yeah. But, um, yeah. Oh, it's well. kind of weird. <laughs> but they said it was because of the chip. And I, I totally understand like having to make sacrifices to be able to bring yeah, a product to market at the right price. So. Well, you know how uh, there's a whole bunch of different like wirelessly enabled devices around your household now? There's like the Philips Hue light bulbs. There's Sonos sound systems. There's uh, the, the door locks and all those yeah, cool Bluetooth things. door locks. Yeah. We saw wi Wi-Fi enabled doorbells. Yeah. Sure. So I They're talked to a company home. that's called Revolve. And what they've done is built this app for your iPhone or for your Android device that basically takes all those different devices and pairs them with the application. So you can control them all within one application instead of having to use all all three or all six different kind of apps for each of your different products. That's kind of becoming a thing. It is. And you know, while it's really cool that you know all of these uh, inexpensive socks and 3D printing and all of these other things that allow people to quickly fabricate the Internet of Things is awesome. And we see so many of these cool technologies coming out. It is kind of a concern because it now is you've a got concern. like you got like 50 <laughs> apps to control your home. You right. Know, your exactly. thermostat one and all of that. So I think what's important here is that's really interesting. And I would hope that not on a product side, but more on like a back end side, we would see more of um, like a standardized API for talking yeah. to these types of devices and standardized security as well. Because yeah, as you know, I agree. So the way that they've done their security with uh, the Revolve device in the application is they have their own personal device that you hook up to your router and you have to pair your phone with it. And your phone pairs with it by using a, a, a light pairing, okay. a image pairing on the phone. So you hold it up over the device and then it flashes until it's paired mm -hmm. and then once you do that the application is good to go I love free space it's optics. so weird yeah it's it was pretty interesting it was pretty cool and the device was like a hundred bucks so it was pretty cheap you want to talk about other free stuff how about free scale they are a chip manufacturer they're really <laughs> cool they make some really interesting chips and free scale was demoing a really fantastic I, I think this is my best of show um, it is not a product but it is a development board and what you can do with this is rapidly prototype wearable computing. So it's called the WARP board, W-A-R-P for wearable rapid prototyping, I think, board. And it's being brought to market by the same people that brought to, uh, brought us the Beagle Bone. So oh, that's really cool. That's and cool. this board is like the size of my pinky, and it has a full Android 4.2 with a uh, you know one gigahertz chip and oodles of RAM and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, all of that in this tiny little chip. And it's open hardware, open source software to get you started writing for it. So if you're into like Arduinos and and Raspberry Pis, this is that for wearable computing, which is really brilliant brilliant because they have all of it, you know, they, they've already done all the heavy lifting as far as the hardware and software. And now you can just get in there and write your application and do what you love. And they have all of these breakout boards for it. So they've got one for um, you know induction charging, they've got one for an L C D, they've got one for e-ink. Um, and so it's pretty cool that you could That's just so cool. you could develop with this and then when you you know have 3D printed your your watch band <laughs> yeah, and yeah. put on your little chip that's the right size right. and uh, and figured it all out and written your application taken it to Kickstarter and raised a million dollars well then you can go over to Freescale and be like all right cool so now we just need this minus those chips plus yeah. these chips and you know what you're working with already so That's awesome. Yeah and it's I just love that it's open software open hardware Yeah um, yeah really enables a lot of creativity and so I feel like like you were talking about 3d printers mm -hmm. um, this is the coolest product is not necessarily a product but a product that enables you to build a product and that yeah. is the most exciting thing uh, they have a whole floor of like Kickstarter-esque companies here well I saw another really cool thing and of course I'm also big on the 3d printers my last very cool thing that I saw was called 3 doodler so oh, it sounds like it's this. another 3D printer, but it's not. They started on Kickstarter, and the whole idea was, oh, what if I screwed up something during my 3D print? What if the filament broke or something like that? Why can't I go back and fix the 3D print as it's been so far? Why can't I edit it? Well, they created a pen that looks kind of like a glue gun, <laughs> surprisingly. Yes. So it heats up the filament inside the pen, and it extrudes it out the tip, of course. And then you can draw. You can be creative, and you can draw your own 3D printed materials. So you use the regular PL and ABS materials, just like another regular 3D printer. You can buy everything online. They have accessories available as well. But you can actually draw 3D prints. So say at when we went to Showstoppers last night, they built an Eiffel Tower. 
and they drew it. That was that was printed. <laughs> that was printed. I had no they built idea. an that Eiffel so Tower, cool. and it was like five feet tall. Yeah, the thing was huge. It. They took a 3D print. They used the pen and they printed out one side. I they love drew that. Drew it all because out because as opposed to like glued it to another side with the heat gun. So as amazing. opposed to 3D printers that are like CNC, they're they're computer controlled. They've yeah. got like you know arms that move a whole gantry and stuff. This, this, you're the arm. You are the I arm, it. and it enables you to be so creative. Like, I could see this developing a new line of creative kids. Like, kids yeah, will see this in their schools this. and be able to do this in art class and be like, okay, create a cube, and they'll have to draw a cube, and it could help with, like, geometry and things. I, the, I just, It's the paintbrush of 3D printing. Yeah, it is. It's the paintbrush of being creative and being able to draw see, and be an artist our best with 3D show. printing. Are creative enablers. Creative so, enablers. Yes. Yeah, that's exactly. Uh, I wanted what they to are. talk about one last awesome thing that I saw at the show here, and it's uh, it's not a product. It's actually on you. Here, you want to oh, put boy. that on? This is okay. Okay, so your badge. What's really cool about the way that uh, press works at uh, CES is that um, we were. They, they're actually really nice to press. They hook us up with a free backpack. Free lunch. And uh, they give us free lunch every day, which is really cool. In years past, it, you, we'd have this big, ugly badge with uh, a pocket full of these coupons, and we'd use these paper coupons to redeem our lunch. Well, now, uh, now these badges are all uh, NFC. And what's really Yay! brilliant about these is if you scan the NFC badge, you'll notice that, in fact, oh I can actually see the gosh. ASCII in here that it says Miss Shannon Morse. That's and, creepy. <laughs> yeah, I know, and all sorts of other fun stuff. Okay, well, so. you scanned it. That's cool. You're getting a bunch of information about it. We, we know we can scan okay, NFC so yeah, devices, yeah, yeah. but what, and what I, would you do with and this? It's not, well, it's not really for tracking because I do have to get close enough to you to, like, tap my phone to your badge. Yeah. Um, but what's interesting about it is if I go into tag information, it's, of course, from um, an awesome company called NXP Semiconductor out oh. of Germany. So that's their, their toll. Um, but what's really cool is it's... Two kilobytes, read write, and it's not locked. Oh. So I could <laughs> press this to yours, read it, press it to mine, and clone your badge and oh steal God. your lunch. That's so funny. <laughs> oh, so that's anyway, terrible. Fun hack from CES. Oh. All right, well, we, we hope you guys have enjoyed our coverage of CES. We want to thank Revision 3 and all the fine folks that have, have helped us get out here, of course. Um, yes, of course. And uh, we're going to take a quick break and thank one of our sponsors. Doesn't matter if you're a curved 4K display or flexible, wearable underpants. When you have that great idea, you need a domain and hosting fast. Every moment counts. And here's the thing, Domain.com's quick discovery system and their easy checkout process make it totally simple to get your website online in like no time. I can't tell you how many times I've had a like bling and I go over there and then boom, like NS1 dot, yeah, website is up. Right? I love these guys because it is totally affordable, it's easy to use, it's totally reliable. They are huge on social media. Hit them up at domain.com. Give them some Hack 5 love. Uh, it really just makes it a fun place to do business. And get this, uh, the guys over at domain.com, you guys have heard me tell you this. They're fun to drink with, but they're also really cool pals that love Hack 5 and love you guys, so they want to hook you up. Go over to domain.com and at checkout, use the coupon code HAK5 for an additional 15% off and love. So, uh, yeah, do that. When you think domains, think domain.com. Well, that just about wraps up this episode of Hack 5. Thanks for tuning in to our CES 2014 coverage. Everything will be available online at revision3.com revision slash, CES. slash CES 2014. Yeah, and of course, hack5.org slash follow to find all the places to find us online and uh, follow us on social media. And you can email us, media. feedback at hack5.org. And of course, don't forget to support us over at the hack shop, hakshop.com. Cool. And with all of that, I'm Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. We'll see you in studio next week. Trust your techno lust. Yeah! What happened? Did she just win? I think she just won CES.